Hey everyone, welcome to the 2011-2012 season at the Denver Center Theatre Company and the fourth season of 10 Minutes to Curtain. We kick things off with a comedy, The Liar by David Ives, adapted from the original play by Pierre Cornet. This is a hilarious story set in 17th century France, where it's all about the clothes. So I thought it would be fun to go backstage and learn about the costumes in the production. But playwright David Ives has also given it a modern spin with his contemporary language. So let's take a look behind the scenes at the clothes and the words of The Liar. The costumes are amazing. The beginning of the theater year. They're beautiful, they're very romantic. Is a very busy time in the Denver Center Theater Company's costume department. Elegant gowns are getting the final touch-ups for the show. When the actors walk on stage, everybody will think, oh, this is really a Denver Center production and kind of glorious and beautiful. And they're very detailed, because it's, really it's really the period known as the Cavalier period, the Three Musketeers period to most people. But the clothes are very elaborate. Um, we did sort of make a style choice. I felt like it needed a stamp of some kind, if you will. For costume designer David K. Mickelson, a slight twist in the detail of the costumes is important, especially in a comedy. We did end up making the choice of using what we think of as traditional sort of French pastels, and they're all trimmed in black. So it's got sort of a slick, elegant, uh, uh, not modern look, but it's a slick, elegant look, all the same style of trimmings that would have happened in the period, but for the most part, it would have happened in whiter cream with what I'm doing. The thought of trimming a comedy entirely in black is not something most people would sort of automatically do. Doing the unexpected and dressing not to the comedy, but the opposite of the comedy, so the comedy comes out of the action, is something that I generally try to do. However, I do go there sometimes <laughs> and do some pretty crazy, funny clothes as well. And Mickelson says seeing the costumes start as sketches and finish as a beautiful final product is a gratifying experience. The whole process of sitting down and reading and getting those pictures in your head and, you know, visually reading is, um, a great joy for me, and then being able to put that down on a piece of paper, find the materials, and have people with the artistry in their hands to create shapes and patterns as you've envisioned them. And, and yes, the finished product when you hit stage is quite a joy to see. And while the costumes help carry the laughter, director Kent Thompson says another very important aspect of the play is the language. Does this display say military ace? Uh, no. It's more like, where'd you get the lace? Well, and that's yeah. part of the gag, yeah. because uh, David Ives is very scrupulous about kind of setting it up, your expectations, and then suddenly undercutting them by having somebody immediately talk about, you know, turn off your cell phone, stop texting. Uh, no eating, please. You think you're incognito. Yes, you, the lady with the bean burrito, put it away. I have a crucial message. I mean, he's, he brings up a phrase that would never exist in, you know, 17th century France, but it's, it's very funny. We generally really appreciate watching well-dressed, sophisticated people behaving badly. And then there are the wigs. A lot of hair was extremely important in the 17th century. It's a very big period for wigs. Um, and men wore wigs and women wore wigs. They also wore their own hair with, you know, added hair for women. A lot of hair. I mean, the men have hair down to their shoulders at least. The hair work that we have here, our wig department is very professional, uh, one of the best in the country, and so it looks beautiful. We put wigs into rehearsal at Kent's request from the very first production meeting, was his, or design meeting, was his request that wigs go in at tech so that people can get used to them. Um, especially the men. Women are used to wearing wigs a bit more on stage, but this length of hair and quantity of hair and the sword fighting and everything else that goes on in the show, he really felt it was important and it did, it did settle them in and make them comfortable when we got to dress rehearsal the next day. You know, it, it'll be a big adjustment for the cast, but again, it's one of the things that identifies it as 18th century France. I would not want to be an actor and wear them, to tell you the truth. So, uh, 
you know, it's just a part of their, another one of their tools though that they get used to. No, I haven't tried any of the wigs on, no, really. The style of a classic French play combined with the funny, rhyming, contemporary language from playwright David Ives makes for a hilarious show that you won't want to miss. I think we can guarantee it will be a gorgeous show to watch. I think we can guarantee that it will be very, very funny. Uh, I believe that this will be one of the funniest things we've done. So don't miss The Liar running right here in the Space Theater through October 16th. For more information, visit denvercenter.org, and I'll see you in the theater. Mm -hmm.